All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We have a very important video today because today we're talking about harvesting figs. We put in a lot of work this season. If you guys have been following along with me throughout the growing season, you know how much techniques we've used, how much we've cared for these trees when it comes to watering, repotting them, training them, fertilizing them, in so many different ways we have cared for these fig trees and all of that would just go to waste if we don't harvest our figs properly. Every fruit tree that you guys grow, you have to learn how to pick them. Everything is slightly different than the other. And the fig is especially, I would argue, a million times better or a million times worse. I'm exaggerating, but definitely a lot better or a lot worse depending on when you pick it. And that's the beauty of growing figs at home, guys. We have the ability, we have the, uh, the pleasure of growing them off of our own trees and picking them at the most optimal ripeness. Why is this important? Because when we get them from the store, at Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, you know, all these different grocery stores that get them from commercial growers, the commercial growers pick them at 50 to 60% ripeness. 50 to 60%. That means if we're gonna be harvesting our own figs, we're getting them at 100%. And there's a big difference between 50 and 100%, isn't there? It's 50%. <laughs> so my point is that that is a big deal. Every day that our fig trees can hang on the tree and continue to ripen, the better and better they're gonna taste. Now. There is a point in which they actually will hang on the tree and start to spoil, mold, or ferment. And so that's not good. Depends on the variety you're growing. It depends on the conditions that you guys have. But typically, I find the best tasting fig, if I taste 20 different varieties at one time, and I have them on a plate, and I'm comparing varieties, it's usually the fig that is the most ripe is going to taste the best on that particular day. Some people like to pick their figs a little earlier. I don't blame you for that. Uh, everyone has their own thing, but a lot of us guys are going to enjoy figs much more if they're perfectly ripe and we're in control. So let's talk a little bit about some of the signs now that we may use to actually decide whether or not we want to pick our figs. And this is probably the perfect example right here that I want to show with you guys, because if you look at these, uh, we have two figs here that one of which is ripe and the other one is not. Now, some of you guys may immediately start touching the fig right here. And you're like, oh, the body of the fig is soft. It must be ripe. The color of the figs are right. We have some cracking in the fig. It looks kind of ugly. It's also hanging down and drooping. These are just... Um, clues these are like secondary clues that the fig is right the real way to know and you'll know every single time doesn't matter what variety you're growing because your fig is going to look a lot different than this trust me so we can't go by looks we have to go by feel and what i'm feeling here is not the body it is actually the neck here is the stem the stem is very hard and it's attached to the tree. Sometimes the stems, by the way, are quite long. See the stem on this one is much longer than the fig we just looked at. Here's the neck, here's the body. So we're trying to make sure that when we look at this fig, we're touching it here because figs ripen from the bottom up. I know that seems counterintuitive because it's attached to the tree right there and the top of the fig you would think would ripen first, but the bottom of the fig is really ripening before the top. So if we know that the top is ripe, the neck is ripe, the rest of it's ripe. And there's just no reason really to touch the bottom of the fig. Now, how about this other one here? If I touch this, this is about as firm as a, maybe a tomato. And so we're not too far away from it being ripe, but we're certainly not like this fig here, which is still green and hard and definitely hard like an apple. So we want to find them not soft like a tomato or as firm as a tomato. We want to find them typically softer than a tomato. Once we pick the fig, by the way, we're going to take it here from the stem and 
pull it off like that. So I'm pulling it off here. I'm not pulling it off by the body. Now we have our fig. One of the telltale signs that you'll see if the fig is indeed ripe is where you pulled it off from. If you see sap leaking from the stem or leaking on where we pulled it off on the tree, we know we did a bad job. It's not. But there it is there, guys. That is how you harvest the fig. I hope you guys now are gonna enjoy your figs to the fullest. If you want that amazing fig experience that I go crazy for, this is why we do this. It's all about harvesting at the right moment. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button for me. Also check out the blog, figboss.com. There's so much other fig related information there. It's an incredible resource. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.